this lecture, we are going to take a closer look into the transmission mechanisms of the vertical force of a tire and physical effects that result thereof. A tire can only transmit forces and torques when it's in contact with the road surface. In contrast to horizontal tire forces, which are friction and shear deformation based forces, the vertical force is a pure deformation based or structural force and depends on properties such as the tire's construction and the inflation pressure. Simplified, the tire can be seen as some kind of air spring. So, before dealing with horizontal tire forces, Let's start with the tire road contact area and take a closer look into the basic mechanisms of vertical tire force transmission by using simple physical considerations. When a tire is pressed to the ground by a certain wheel load FZ, it is deformed in vertical direction. Let's take a look at the simple substitute model shown on the left, where the tire belt is considered to be elastically attached to the rim. There you can see two deflections in radial direction of the loaded tire. The deflection delta ZB of the tire belt and the deflection delta ZF of the tire flank. These two together form the overall vertical tire deflection delta Z, which can also be determined by the difference between the unloaded tire radius R0 and the loaded tire radius RL in a more convenient way. The vertical tire contact force which counteracts the wheel load is a function of this deflection. Simplified, it can be described as the product of the overall vertical stiffness of a tire CZ and the deflection delta Z. Let's talk a bit more about this vertical stiffness of a tire. The resistance of a tire against the deformation in vertical direction is described by this vertical stiffness, which determines the relationship between vertical force and deflection. Here you can see examples of measured vertical force deflection characteristics. Exemplarily, they are shown on the left side for a passenger car tire and on the right side for a truck tire. With increasing vertical load, the vertical stiffness increases, leading to a nonlinear progressive force deflection behavior. This means that the vertical stiffness of a tire is a function of the vertical deflection too. To give you a better sense, Simplified, the stiffness of a typical passenger car tire is in the range of 200 kN per meter. And for a truck tire, it is in the range of 1000 kN per meter. The overall vertical stiffness of a tire depends on two main factors. First, on the structural stiffness of the carcass, which depends on the tire's construction. And second, on the inflation pressure, as you can see here. Of the influences on the overall vertical stiffness, the internal inflation pressure is the predominant one. Considering a passenger car tire, the structural rigidity contributes about 15% or less to the overall vertical stiffness. The remainder of about 85% is due to the internal inflation pressure. Thus, a tire's ability to carry load depends significantly on the inflation pressure. During driving, the vertical force acting on a tire is usually not constant and will deviate from the static vertical force or payload and stand still. Such a change in vertical force can also occur on even road surfaces. For example, during braking, the vertical load shifts from the tires on the rear axle to the ones on the front axle. At this point, we have already talked about the vertical stiffness of a tire. Now we will take a look on the relations of the vertical force to the size of the contact area and the pressure distribution. As you will see in later lectures, these two have a significant effect on the horizontal tire force transmission. Let's go back to the simple model from earlier and take a look at what tire deflection means for the contact area between tire and road, which is called contact batch. The resulting contact batch length L can be approximated by means of a simple geometric approach. Assuming the undeformed belt is a circle and using the geometric relations shown on the right, we can derive a relationship between the half of the contact length L, the belt deflection delta ZB and the unloaded tire radius R0. We assume that the flank deformations are in the same range as the belt deformations and that delta ZB is much smaller than R0 which holds in normal driving situations. In this way, 
an approximated relation between contact batch length L and overall vertical deflection delta Z can be derived. The complete derivation can be found under the following link. To give you a better sense of the dimensions of a typical contact batch, we have created an example for you. On the left side, there is the approximated relation between the contact patch length and the influencing factors unloaded tire radius R0, vertical tire stiffness CZ, and the vertical tire load FZ. This approximated behavior of the contact length L with respect to the deflection is shown in the figure below. Now, calculate the contact patch length of a typical passenger car tire by means of this approximation with the following parameters. The vertical force is 3.5 kN, the vertical stiffness is 200 kN per meter, and the unloaded tire radius is 0.3 meter. Choose the right solution. A description of the width of the contact patch is more complex than for the length. Apart from additional influences such as camber angle, the roundness of the tire structure plays an important role. The cross section of a tire is somewhere between a rectangle and a circle. To highlight this, we show you two extreme examples. On the right side, there is a tire with an almost rectangular shape, as often seen for passenger cars or truck tires. Motorcycle tires, on the other hand, typically have a rounder cross section. The main reason for this is that they can and usually will be driven at significantly higher camber angles than passenger or truck tires. Compared to the rectangular shape, the width of the contact patch changes more for a rounded tire with a changing vertical force. Let's take a look at two so-called footprints of a typical passenger car tire. The left one shows the measured shape of the contact patch at the low vertical load and the right one at the high load. What can be seen is the transition from a more elliptical shape at lower loads to a more rectangular one at higher loads. Most tires are profiled tires, this means that only the positive part of the tread is in contact with the road. The contact area can be distinguished between positive and negative areas. The main task of the negative areas is to drain water from the contact area on wet roads. As rule of thumb, about 70% of the overall area is positive, which means that only 70% of this already rather small area is really in contact with the road. For a certain tire, the exact value of the positive area significantly depends on its individual tread design. So keep in mind, all forces acting on a tire transmitted via a contact area that is smaller than the contact patch itself which has the size of a few centimeters in length and width. Think about that the next time you sit in a car. Finally, in the last part of this lecture, let's take a closer look at the vertical force transmission mechanisms within the contact patch. In general, when an on-rotating tire without camber is loaded and pressed a flat surface, the vertical load Fz produces a vertical pressure distribution Qz in the contact patch, as shown here on the left. The vertical pressure distribution in the contact area shows a symmetric shape. It is symmetric both in the longitudinal plane as shown here and in the lateral plane of the tire. For many vehicle dynamics applications, the vertical pressure distribution can be simplified to a description by a resulting contact force, which in this case acts in the wheel contact point W. This simplification is shown on the right figure. That's it for now. We will continue in a second part.